Welcome back to my YouTube channel, everyone. This is Frank Tamora, again bringing you the news. February the 6th, 2013, and there's a lot of news to bring, so let me get right into it. Well, first of all, I wanted to, again, I'm going to start off with uh, news concerning Israel because that's really important because Israel is going to be in the mix, the heart of it, of these end time prophecies. And if you're new, uh, just, just be advised to watch Psalm 83. And this is in the Old Testament. It's about the war that's going to be coming against Israel. It shows you who's going to be involved in it. If you want more information on this, or complete details, just go to my website. You'll see the link here of February the 6th, 2013. Click it and you'll get all of the information that tells you everything you need to know about the Psalm 83 war. Who's going to win? about when it's going to be fought, how we'll know when it's going to be fought. The next war will be the Ezekiel War, of which Russia is going to lead this war uh, later after the Psalm 83 War. And we know that these nations are going to form a confederacy to try to take the uh, Israel, the nation of Israel out. We'll see it right here, the confederate against thee. And uh, they're doing this to thinking that they're going to wipe out Israel and you'll see here in verse 4, part of the verse 4, where it says they're going to wipe out the name of Israel so they're not uh, even re in remembrance. In other words, get rid of them completely. Uh, thinking that it is possible, these, the Islamic nations will think that it's possible to get rid of the Israelis. It's not going to happen. So with that, I'm just going to set up the parameters here so that you'll understand. And I'll connect the dots for you so that you're not confused in any way because there are two uh, prophecies and they are separate. They're different nations who fight against Israel at different times. And of course, all this information is in my book. So let's go to the first headline. You'll see Netanyahu, uh, time to stand up to Hezbollah. Now, once you go to my site and you click on the picture, you'll see that it will uh, enlarge for you. And you'll also know that when you go through here, you'll see that the Hezbollah is mentioned in number five as one of the peoples that are going to uh, attack Israel. You also see them in number nine uh, in Tar, south, or the southern Lebanese. So just keep that in mind because the Hezbollah are mentioned in there. So let's go over to the first article here and you'll see it. Let me scroll up to it. And of course, Netanyahu is talking about Hezbollah, who is the organization, part of this PLO organization that is extremely bent on destroying Israel. So we see the connection right there to Psalm 83. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu has been trying to get the nations of the world to see Hezbollah for what they are, trying to wipe out Israel and causing problems for anybody who doesn't believe in Allah or Muhammad. So I'm just going to play this real briefly for you. This is the Prime Minister addressing this problem. I'd like to commend the government of uh, Bulgaria for its thorough and professional investigation. It established clearly that... Hezbollah is the organization that perpetrated the terrorist atrocity in Borgas. Six innocent people are alone. I'd like to commend the government of uh, Bulgaria for its thorough and professional investigation. It established clearly that uh, Hezbollah is the organization that perpetrated the terrorist atrocity in Borgas. Six innocent people lost their lives there, five Israelis, one Bulgarian. And is a further corroboration of what we know, that Hezbollah and Iran are together building a worldwide terrorist network 
They've attacked in a dozen countries. They're planning attacks in dozens more. And it's time that the international community branded Hezbollah for the terrorist organization that they are. That's important. That's being considered now in Europe. They should do the right thing. Place the blame where it's deserved. In the place of Hezbollah, which is one terrorist organization with one leadership, one director. All right. So you have... The reason why I'm showing this, especially for the new people, is because when the Lord gives us specific names of people who are going to attack Israel, and you see that those people are bent on coming against Israel, then that's when you should really be paying attention. And uh, if you're watching the news, you'll see that in the not-too-distant future, there's going to be another conflict, and no doubt that that conflict will turn as we watch the birth pangs go, the conflict will end up into the Psalm 83 war, the first war that will be fought. Now, let me get into the next article here. You'll see this come up here. And, of course, this was uh, yesterday's news, which I didn't make a uh, comment on. It's very brief. But just to show you that the third Iron Dome deployed in the north. Now, they've been putting up these iron domes, and what they are is a defense system that will stop the rockets and the missiles from landing in Israel. At least that's the hope, and most of them are working. We know this from the last assault by the Palestinians from the Gaza Strip who sent over 700 rockets, and then obviously the, uh, the Iron Dome was working for the defense of Israel in that conflict about a month and a half ago. But it says, following the growing threats of the Syrian and the Lebanon, of course, here's two more names that are mentioned in that Psalm 83 war, Israel has developed a third Iron Dome missile defense battery in the northern Israel. The batteries have recently been deployed in Haifa and uh, Shifed. So just brief news about what's going on uh, in the Middle East when it comes to uh, politics and what's going on with uh, Israel and those nations mentioned in the Psalm 83 war. Now, here's an interesting article, and uh, why is this so interesting? Is because it's talking about Turkey. Now, Turkey is going to be involved. Let me go back to my site just very briefly here. There you go. Now, Turkey are one of the nations that are mentioned in the scripture that will align themselves with Russia coming from the north against Israel in the last days. All right. So you yesterday I was talking about Gomar and of course you have all these other nations. And again, don't worry if you don't understand it right now. When you go to my book and you download my book today for free, there's a chapter that will give you every name of every single nation that will be coming against Israel, and it'll show you uh, the Old Testament name for uh, Turkey, and uh, it'll explain it very simple. But for the purposes of this report, you just need to know that Turkey's involved in the war that will be coming against Israel after the Psalm 83 war, and why is this so important? Well, we do know, for example, that in Zechariah 12, chapter 12, that is, verses 2 and 3, this is where the prophet in the Old Testament tells us, you know, essentially at the end of the day, all the nations are going to be coming against Israel in the last days. And so Israel only has a few allies left, and even the ones that they do have, they're falling off uh, very, very quickly. One of the allies was Turkey, major ally up until about two years ago. And this is where this article comes in. And let me go play this article for you now. And it says, the patriots in Turkey cannot protect Israel from Iran. Very interesting because Iran, as you know now, is one of the nations in the, the Ezekiel 38 war, and so is Turkey. All right, so you see the alliance, and it's not a coincidence that these names are always showing up in the news as of late. Now, once again, refuting the opposition's claim that the Patriot missile systems deployed in the Turkish territory by NATO uh, actually aims to protect Israel from Iran. Defense Minister Ismet Ismez has stated that such protection is technically impossible. The operational command of the system will belong to the supreme allied commander in Europe in order to fulfill legitimate defense in those most effective ways. Now, some of our 
our colleagues lodge claims that the target of the deployment of these Patriots, and this is the Patriot missile, that's what it looks like up here, is aimed at protecting Israel from missiles to be launched from Iran. And what I'm showing you is are things to come. Because Iran is going, definitely, they're going to make an attempt to hit Israel, to wipe out Israel. And this attempt is going to be coming along with the Russians. Now, many of you may not believe this, so all I can ask is just remember what you heard here. Remember what I showed you from the scriptures. And uh, hopefully when you see it happen, then you'll the light will go off and you'll remember this was not a warning from Frank DeMora. This was a warning that Frank was pointing to what God said in Ezekiel chapter 38 as he named each and every one of those nations. So they're talking about protecting from Iran, which does not at all comply with the truth, obviously. It is not technically possible uh, for a missile uh, from Iran to Israel. Now, we do know when this attack, the, is, the, the attack, and I'm going to move back to my site here for a second, we know when the attack happens, there's going to be so many missiles, so many arms, so many planes that will be coming uh, against Israel that the whole entire world is going to think, this is it, Israel is finally going to get wiped out. Now, we do know from Scripture, just before it happens now, let me remind you, that we are told in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that God is going to step in this battle. It will be God who fights the enemy, not Israel, as I mentioned yesterday. And so even though that there's all kinds of missiles and all kinds of rockets that these Islamic nations are thinking that when they launch them all with their planes and their bombs, that they are going to hit Israel, not going to happen. God is going to turn their weapons on this army. And as I said a couple days ago when I was talking about this, five-sixths of the entire armies that come down against Israel in this battle are going to be wiped out in that day. And it's going to happen quick. And they're never going to even reach Israel. God is going to stop them in the mountains even before they get there. So you'll understand more when you actually see it take place. So there's the connection between Turkey. Turkey, it used to be a major ally. They're no longer a major ally. So very, very important to understand the connection between all of these prophecies, how Turkey has fallen apart uh, or away from Israel. They have aligned themselves with Iran and uh, they're making alliances with the same nations that obviously that are mentioned in that war. So let's go on to the next one because Paul, and I've talked about this many times, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 talks about in these two verses that when war comes, we know what war is because he talks about the sudden destruction. Uh, when we hear the call, let me just read it for you, when, uh, when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. So those of us who love the Lord, we're on the watch. Nothing is going to take us by uh, or come to us as a thief in the night because we're going to know before it happens. Now we're seeing the call for peace and safety go out. There's, there's no uh, qualms about that. We see it in the news almost every single day now. So let me go over to that article. All right, this is February 6th. This is today. It says, Jerusalem expect Obama will bring a new peace plan, demand breakthrough. Now, the visit to Israel could impact makeup of coalition and could also lead to the U.S. pressure for a new peace plan. Now, the White House, the purpose is to make progress on issues like Iran and Syria. Ambassador Shapiro, no preconditions for the meeting were set. So Obama is supposed to go over to Israel. He didn't go to Israel one time in the last four years. Now they're saying that he will go over. And honestly, I'm on the border, on the fence here, thinking I don't believe it'll go. 
it is possible. If the guy had any brains uh, and he wanted to improve his stature in the world, just the appearance of going to Israel, whether he believes that he really wants to help him or not, uh, he would make the trip. Now keep in mind that Barack Obama, as of my video yesterday, I showed you that the Barack Obama sent over the first installment of those F-16 jets to Egypt, Israel's enemy. You know, Egypt wants to annihilate Israel. So, you know, what Obama's doing in the Middle East, you know, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be much good. And we do know from the scriptures, keep in mind what the scripture tells us. Let me go back here again. The scripture tells us when they're calling for peace and safety, not when they have peace and safety, that's when the sudden destruction is coming. So just the fact that they're even talking about going over for this peace, uh, these new peace talks and maybe demanding Israel, whatever they're going to do, is very, very significant to us in prophecy because when they call for peace and safety, this is when the next conflict will break out. Now, officials in Jerusalem believe that the U.S. President Barack Obama, who has announced that he will visit Israel in mid-March, will arrive with the new peace plan and the demand for a breakthrough in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. What kind of demand is he going to be? Will it be one-sided? Well, if, if any indication is what he has done in the last four years, I say that it is going to be lopsided in favor of the Palestinians, but I'll give the president uh, some slack on this and wait and see the outcome of what he does. But believe me, the past, past experience shows me that he's not in favor of helping Israel. It's been mostly uh, the Palestinians. So let me go over now, if you will, to the next article, because this is going to be... Uh, again, part of Bible prophecy coming up, Israel and the ever-elusive Muslim unity. And we know, let me go back here because I need to explain something for you. We know one thing for sure. Now, the, as this article that I'm going to be pointing out to you, it talks about the, the Muslims having problem with, with unity. Now, we know that, for example, if the Muslims were smart, they would combine all of the forces that are named in the Psalm 83 war. They would combine all of the forces, which are completely different than are mentioned in the Psalm 83 war. If they combined all of these nations from the Ezekiel war and got together in unity to try to take Israel out, even that wouldn't help. But we see here that just you know, primarily what I'm saying here is because the Lord showed us there's unity here, right? We know that because they're coming together with one consent as a confederate army against Israel. So this is one part of it. Here, But here's the other part. There's no unity. They're not coming together on this. And what will happen is when this group is taken out, then this group, the Muslim brothers who saw the other group taken out, there's no doubt in my mind this is when they're going to act against Israel. So you can see the disunity right in, in the prophecy, if you will, behind the scenes without anybody even saying anything. So let me go back now to that article and we'll re-bring that up again. And it says this, it was a momentous occasion, the first visit to Egypt by the president of Iran since the founding of the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979. President Muammar Muhammad Ahmadinejad arrived in Egypt Tuesday in a, the uh, enthusiastic welcome from the Egypt's President Mohamed Marsi and the top e Egyptian officials. Yet, underneath the kisses and expressions of mutual regard, the visit revealed yet again how deep the divisions are in the Islamic world, and part of this division is, is really part and parcel for how the Islamic nations are going to be destroyed uh, by Israel because there is no unity. God uses their disunity to keep unity in Israel. 
and why the Sunnis and the Shiites might only be able to unite, look at this, on the basis of their mutual hatred of Israel. Now, what I just showed you on those at my site here, the mutual hatred of Israel. No doubt, these people, including Iran, which is sitting down with Egypt, who is mentioned here in number four, they're going to see what happened and they're going to retaliate at a later date. That's obvious to me. So when I read these, these uh, articles and I see the disunity, I can see what the Lord is showing us uh, in his word behind the scenes. Now, the article goes on and it talks a little bit about how this rift between the Shiites, the Shiites these different factions of the Muslims are in play in how uh, the only unity that they're ever going to have is their hatreds towards Israel. And I'll let you go into depth on that, if you will. But I wanted to just make my point about what the Lord is showing me uh, concerning the Ezekiel and the Psalm 83 war when it comes to both of these men's nations and a disunity. Now, again, let me go back to my site. Again, we'll scroll down. And uh, let me get over here uh, because now we're talking about Syria. Syria, uh, for the, those that are new, there's two prophecies about Syria that really show us definitely what's going to happen to Damascus and Syria. The first one is Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1 where the Lord shows us that Damascus is going to be destroyed. Even in the scriptures, it says it's going to be left in a ruinous heap, as you see here, uh, highlighted in the blue. And then there's another one in Jeremiah chapter 49, verses, if you will, 23 to 27, where it talks about uh, Syria being led on fire and uh, the young men falling in the streets, okay? And I will kindle a fire on the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Benadad. So, we know what's going to happen in Syria. So when I've been telling the people, watch what's going on in Syria because they're closing in on the capital and it's already starting to look like a ruinous heap. Let's go in and find out what's going on. Uh, this is today's news. You'll see it here as we bring it up. Here's the news source that I'm getting it from. And when you go to my website, if this is the first time here at the YouTube channel, when you go to my website, you're going to have all the articles with the links. Very easy for you to connect and read everything. But here we're told that the Syrian army launched an all-out offensive on the Damascus Providence on Wednesday, a security official said, as the watchdog reported the fiercest bombardments and fighting in the region for months. So they're in Damascus, right? So this should really... Uh, any Christian, it should perk you up when it's talking about Damascus and what's going on in Damascus in relation to those two prophecies. Now, the, provid the providence was bombed very badly in attacks that have not been seen in months. There was also very heavy fighting, no doubt. Now, when you scroll down, it gives you a little bit more about the information about the fighting that's going on near Damascus. And I believe it also, there it goes, it talks about how many people have been killed already as the Syrians are fighting against the Syrians, of which, by the way, I mentioned this before, in Matthew chapter 24, the Lord said uh, nation or kingdom would come against kingdom. And this is part of that prophecy coming to fruition as you see the Syrians fighting themselves. All right, so let me go on now to the next one. And you're going to see the Lord told us in his word, when you go to my site, I put up the scripture there. I'll go right to it so you know for sure. Wars and rumors of war. Prophecy signed in Matthew 24, 6. And there you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now, let me just show you rumor of a war because it's in the news, but there's definitely going to be fought uh, more wars that are going to be coming up. In this next one, you'll see headline to it is China and Japan on the brink. Let me go right to it. 
and there is a video there that I'll play the video so that you could see what's going on. A lot of tension going on right there now. It'll translate for you. A Chinese military Zhang Wei class frigate used a fire control radar against the Japanese escort ship Yudachi. The Defense Ministry has been looking to confirm the type of radar used and confirmed that this was indeed a fire control radar or indeed a type used to help guide weapons. Having this sort of fire control used is indeed very abnormal. Japan realizes that if someone takes a wrong step, then it could indeed become a very dangerous situation. As such, we have indeed lodged our protests through diplomatic channels. So there you go, I have another, just another example of rumors of wars, things heating up around the world. Uh, yesterday I showed you a video where Gerald Salini was talking about the different places in Africa that were fighting against each other. And uh, it just seems like everything is escalating. And again, when we see this kind of news, we know to expect it because Mark 13, 8, I, I quote this quite often, that's where the Lord said these are going to be the birth pangs. So let's go now to the next article. And uh, before I do that, let me bring you back to my site here because now we're going to be dealing with the sign of diseases and one sign after another. And what uh, you'll see that there's a, a host of different articles about this. Over 700 people exposed to the HIV hepatitis at Virginia Hospital that uh, reused insulin pins. I mean, not too bright. But these are, you know, the Lord said there was going to be pestilence. And we're seeing all of these different kinds of diseases that are pop, uh, popping up, excuse me, that are called superbug diseases. Uh, ones that have been mutating and they're, they're causing, causing havoc in many places around the world. Now here's one rise of the antibiotic resistant superbugs in a polyp, a uh, Apocalyptic threat to humanity, says the experts. Now let me go to this one because this one I'm sure that you'll find really interesting. And here's the headline, and this is today's news. It says, in the, near, in the very near future, an apocalyptic scenario will more than likely emerge in which simple infections become deadly killers that are completely untreatable using modern medicine. This is the opinion of the several prominent medical experts, including the UK's Chief Medical Officer, Dame Sally Davis, who recently made these and other chilling statements about the future antibiotic-resistant superbugs and their threat to humanity. Now, just take what they're telling you, these are the experts, and you put side by side what the Lord has revealed to us in his word about diseases, you'll see it here, pestilence that are coming. Then when you read the book of Revelation, and you see the pale horse, and you see the disease and the, and the number of people who will be dying during the tribulation, things start to really come into focus about where we're headed. And there's no doubt in my mind, these birth pangs are headed to the fruition of Revelation, the book of Revelation. Now, I've been showing you uh, quite often the prophecy about the birds, the fish, and the animals dying. And you can go to my website. As a matter of fact, you can just Google Frank Demore, birds, fish, and animals dying uh, complete stats, and you'll get a complete list of, since 2009. But here's a new one that just popped up, and I want to go over to it so that you can see what's going on. It says, fish worth millions in exports die in the uh, Icelandic lake after building work stars them of oxygen. This is, look, today. Look at all these fish. This is why they call it the apocalypse. Take a look at this. Now, when you go and you look at my complete list since 2009, 
and you see pictures like this escalating over the years. I mean, now people are really becoming aware of what's going on. We're having more incidences like this. We're seeing more fish die out because of intense heat. We're seeing red tides that are, are making the water systems and the lakes and rivers uh, and some parts of the oceans look red like blood, which is what the Lord showed us in the book of Revelation. So when we see things like this, you need to pay attention because most of the people, even the, the people who are in church, don't understand that these are the signs that the Lord told us to look for. Now, moving on, one of the other signs that Jesus talked about in Revelation chapter 13 was the sign when the Antichrist comes, he's going to have a system. It will be a cashless society, we know that. And the Lord tells us that uh, he's gonna, the Antichrist is actually going to control everything. How do we know that? Let's look. Revelation chapter 13, starting with verse 16. And he causes all, both small and great, doesn't matter what your statue is, if you're still living at this time, most of you will be, unless you know, you're the older generation and uh, your days are numbered. But unless something happens to you, you're going to be here. And so it won't matter what your stature is. It won't matter if you're rich or poor. That's what the Lord said. Doesn't matter if you're in jail. Look at this, free or bond. In other words, if you're free or you're bond. If you're in jail, you're going to be affected. To receive a mark in where? The right hand or in their foreheads. So we know that some kind of antichrist system is going to come. And through that system that will be placed in the right hand or in the forehead, and in my book I give you many, many different technologies that they're using now that will take money right from your checking account without you ever touching cash. All right? So that no man might buy or sell, say he that had the mark, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So that tells us right there, you're going to be X'd out of the economy, the world economy, unless you have Antichrist system identification mark. Now we see technologies moving in that direction. In, in my book, I show you how these technologies are being used and now it's being mandatory in many cases. And you'll see all of that information in my book. But here, take a look at this. This is an article that just came out. I'm going to go to that article. And you'll see it here. Welfare food stamp recipients could soon be required to get microchip with the RFID tags. Now, in this article, they talk about how there's nearly... 50 million Americans, uh, and according to this article, there's 10,000 new enrollees. They're going into the food substance program. You'll see it down here. And uh, what they're doing is they're coming up with these new technologies to track people, to make sure that there's no fraud. And in the background, what they're checking is eventually they want to go to these chips. In other words, if you're on low income, if you're on food stamps, uh, what's going the road, what they're heading towards, and they're going uh, piece by piece to get there, eventually you probably see the RFID chips used to make sure that you're not defrauding uh, Americans by getting food stamps when you don't deserve it. All right, you'll see it here. Let me just go right up here and read a section of this for you so that you'll get this very clearly if you don't want to read it. For at least the past 15 years, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA, has been actively trying to develop new ways to decrease fraud in the federal food stamp program, which currently covers nearly 50 million Americans and adds more than 10,000 new enrollees to its ranks every single day, according to the reports. 
Now, I did check some of the reports. They're telling the truth. I verified that information, and I'll even point you to uh, some places where you can get this information. But one disconcerting method the agencies appear to be considering involves the potential use of the radio frequency identification, our FID chips, to track and identify food stamp recipients at the national level. Now they get in and they start talking to you when it started to come and started to reveal what they were going to do. Down here it talks about, <clears throat> about the methods that they were going to be using. Biometric identification technology provides automatic methods to identify a person based on the physical characteristics such as, here we go, the fingerprints, the hand shape, the characteristics of the eye and the face, right? So right away, what does this tell us? Well, if they're talking about hand and face, what, did the, what does the scriptures tell us? Eventually, but at the end of the day, that's where it's going to end up. In the right hand or where? Where's your forehead? Well, it's on your face. It's just steps that are being taken to drive people to the fruition of the prophecy and revelation. Now, when you scroll down, they'll give you some other information. Government pushes the RFID as a solution to fraud and waste. Now, one of the articles that I checked is right here, and I'm going to go to it because this is, uh, the, this is the paper that came out. Let me, let me scroll up here and I'll show you what it looks like. Bear with me as I scroll here for a second. I think this is really in, important that you see what I'm showing you so that you'll know that I'm not making this up, that this is actually uh, the report that they were citing. Just comes up here in a second. There you go. Introduction to biometric identification technology capabilities and applications to the food stamp program. Now I'm going to go back to where I had it highlighted. All right, so now we're back where I started before, before I was doing all the scrolling. And I thought that this was pretty interesting because what they were doing here is they were giving you all these different places where it's where they're going to use it, where they can use it. And they give you the dates and so forth, like the National Registry, the Immigration and Naturalization Service, the uh, INS, right? But look at this. It says several applications of the biometric technology are being tested or are in use in the banking and the credit industries. And, then, of course, they give you the example of the master charge testing of finger imaging and so forth. So... Does this strike you as being familiar? The banking and the credit institutions? Well, you better believe it. It's because this is what the Lord told us is going to happen. This is what we see from Revelation chapter 13. Where, where do you think your money is? It's in the bank. It's stored in the bank or stored on some electronic card, these smart cards. But this is the direction they're going in. And what you see here is a very subtle movement, step by step. Well, the people will get accustomed to it. They'll think that it's a good system. And then the system will go into effect. And who's going to make that a system effect? Obviously, it's going to be the Antichrist. The Antichrist is the one who's going to be doing this. But all we're seeing here is the road that is going to fulfill these prophecies. Now, yesterday, I put up a video. Uh, I gave a warning yesterday. And I, what I did is I showed you in my video about this warning that I gave five days ago. Now, this is what I, I said yesterday in my post on the 5th, because five days before, I had warned that the Lord had shown me, the, warned the people, put up the red flag, and I showed you that video. Warn the people that there was going to be huge quakes that were going to happen shortly. And so I issued that warning. And then over the past five days, all of a sudden, all of these earthquakes started to happen. And right after I put up the, the, uh, the latest news of yesterday, uh, I, what I did is I went back because an hour and a half later, 
more earthquakes hit and they were even bigger than the ones that I thought were going to happen or I warned five days ago. And so I want to bring you an update now of what happened an hour and a half after I issued that order of what I warned you five days ago. And for that, let me just go over to and let's see what happened. Now, I want you to take a look at this. This is today's day. Okay, this is the 6th. Take a look at this. Now, the, why I'm scrolling down here, I want you to understand something. The Lord in Matthew chapter 24 told us to look for many earthquakes. In Luke 21 11, he said, watch the great quakes. This is in a one day period. Look at this. And today there was another, you know, when you get into six, you're, you're talking about some big earthquakes. Here's a 6.3. Look at all of these earthquakes that hit the Santa Cruz Island. This is just today now, all right? 6.6, six, 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 Now, what they did is most of these quakes actually hit yesterday, but because of the time difference, they were put up at the site on the 6th. But what I wanted you to see is the number of earthquakes. Now, the bigger earthquake that I was talking about, the 8-point earthquake and a 6-point and a 6-6 and subsequent we see the 6-3, they all happen after uh, I posted my warning an hour and a half later. Now, when you scroll down for the rest of the seven days, let's just go into what I warned you about within the five days, and you'll see 6.0, 6.9, 6.4, 6.3, 60, 60, and 6.2. I'm not even going to get in here. All right, I won't even mess with that. But for the time that when the Lord, you know, really set it on my heart to warn, that's what's happened. And so all I'm asking is this. Let's take what the Lord said, and if you don't believe it, just watch the news, because the Lord will reveal himself, no doubt, through his, uh, his word in the news. You'll see it happen. Now let me go to my site in closing. And in closing, let me just encourage anyone that just found my site to please go to my website and you'll find it at www.ntimesresearchministry.com. Really easy. Or you can go to my other older site, thebibleprophecyman.com. Now I am going to filter most of my information shortly over to the new site and this is the banner from my new site at the www.endtimesresearchministries site but when you're there click on the book start reading the facts because i'm showing you what's happening right now and i'm showing you also in here as i documented over the years what the lord told us to look for in all of those things have been fulfilled except for a few of the prophecies which I mentioned today. And one of those is the Psalm 83 war, the other is the Ezekiel war, and we know, obviously, the rapture hasn't taken place, nor this beginning of the seven-year tribulation. So knowing that there are not very many left, what should you do? Well, you, should you say, oh, let me just sit back and I'll watch, I'll see. Well, if that's your... If that's your thinking, if that's your thought about your stance on Christ, all I can say is to point you here. But ye, brethren, are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. If your thought is you're just going to wait around and see if the Bible's true, it will take you by surprise. You will be in the dark, not just on this prophecy, but most of the prophecies that it's going to come to you as a thief in the night. You do not want that to happen. So all I'm asking you is today, if the Lord is showing you something and you're not sure, 
If you knock, the door will open. This is what the Lord told us. Just ask the Lord to save you today. He'll hear you and he'll mark your name in his book of life. And when that book is open, no one, no enemy is greater than our Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be sealed for eternity as a child of the Lord Jesus Christ for the atonement of your sins by the blood that Christ poured out on the cross. God bless you all.